People who engage others find meaning and happiness in life. Tevia was such a person. Ugh, it sucks being dead. Mm -hmm. Being dead blows. I guess the lesson I'm supposed to learn is that I need to savor being alive. Exactly. It's the life before the grave that counts, not life after. OK. So I'm not really dead. But in case you were asking why I'm searching for religion in a graveyard, well, that goes back to a question I've always had about atheism, the religion for the people who have no religion. Atheists believe that after you die, there's nothing. What would nothing feel like? It is estimated that 15% of the planet's population is godless, and that number is growing. I wanted to know why. I also want to know if not believing in God can really count as a religion anyways. So at the beach, I met with Justin Trottier, one of the most outspoken young atheists around. And I'm Tevye. How you doing? Very well. A lot of your friends are atheists too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my friends. I've I have friends of a very diverse background, but I guess the work that I do and some of the issues that I take on does tend to be of real interest to non-believers, atheists, agnostics, free thinkers, skeptics. There's a lot of labels, right? But whatever. I mean, these are people who believe in a kind of a naturalistic worldview. It doesn't leave room for gods or spirits or angels. So we're standing on the beach with beautiful water and the sand and this incredible nature. Mm -hmm. Who created this? How did this get here? That's a very, very difficult question. I don't think anybody really has a very good answer to how the life, the universe, and everything arose. Um, all this stuff has taken many, many billions of years to get here, both the, the beach that we're on, the, the planet that we're on, as well as our own bodies, right? We just think that that process can happen just as well and just as majestically without there need, needing to be some kind of a uh, divine, you know, watchmaker in the sky who's kind of tinkering here and there. It turns out Justin Trottier is so passionate about the idea of God not existing that he's launched a web-based TV series to create online discussions for those who believe in atheism. You know, religious organizations have not only television shows, but whole networks where they talk about issues of the day, say same-sex marriage or stem cell research from a Christian perspective or a Muslim perspective. But you would never think, well, let's see what a humanist or an atheist might say about this social policy. Think again, TV. So what do you say to people who find it offensive, but that is not your intention? Well, just that, that it's not really fair for the, the discourse to be set by only one side of it, right? That there are multiple sides, and it's fair game for all of us to be equally involved in these discussions. But we genuinely want to get people just thinking about these things from new perspectives. In fact, the, the catch line for Think Again TV is, think again. Oh my God. And it isn't just Justin who's thinking again if God exists. There are literally thousands and thousands of young people who genuinely profess their godless ways. Back at the beach, I met a whole bunch of them. Hey guys. Hi. I'm Tevya. Hi. Is this a meeting of the Atheist Society? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Are all you guys atheists? Yeah. yeah. All of you? Yeah. And what is the definition of an atheist? A person without religion. Somebody who lacks a belief in God or God. The thought that somebody goes off to an afterlife, I'd have to completely convince myself of something that wasn't true. It would provide no comfort whatsoever. One thing, uh, atheists don't believe in nothing. It isn't a belief in nothing. And for this group of young atheists, how the traditional Bible and religion treats issues like gay rights is not a small concern. Especially in my early teens, I was very concerned with gay rights. Um, so, but I was still a Christian, so I was trying to consolidate that, and I was trying to look up all these things on the internet about gay Christians and what like different interpretations of all these Bible passages. So I was just like, you know what? I don't think I can match up this religion to what I actually believe. So I took off my cross necklace and that was about it. Oh, 
Who here uh, came to atheism on their own? All of you. And just as the discussion was really starting to heat up, enrolled Mother Nature. While many people may have seen this lightning-filled sky as an act of God crashing down on these non-believers, for these atheists, sometimes a summer thunderstorm is, well, just a summer thunderstorm. But for me, I still wondered how godless people felt about the bigger questions of life and of death. And I was about to find out. So far in my journey into the world of the godless, I had met a group of very bright, young, and very committed atheists. But it got me thinking. With most people and their communities celebrating religious holidays almost constantly, where does this leave atheists? And how do they express the big events in life? Religions have rituals. Are there any atheist rituals? Because we don't have any authority figures, we don't have anybody to kind of set rituals in motion, but we do have our own in, you know, individual ability to frame our own traditions and rituals if we like. There are, for example, atheist officiants um, or celebrants who perform weddings and funerals and other sorts of uh, celebrations. I could understand atheist weddings and celebrations, but funerals? That deals with the big question, death. You're dead. In many religions, believing in the afterlife or in heaven or in hell is one of the bedrocks of faith. So how do atheists deal with this, the final question? I was about to meet an atheist funeral officiant. And we provide meaningful, dignified memorial ceremonies for non-religious people. Where would an atheist be buried? In many cases, the families have a plot in a cemetery. So the thought of resting with your loved ones, I think many, many atheists are buried in, in cemeteries. What happens to people when they die? Well, I think, personally, um, when I die, I've accepted the fact that I'll be dead. So as our bodies decompose, we go back to the earth and as the circle of life, if you will. Uh, Carl Sagan expressed it very nicely. He said, we must all return to that cosmos, so vast and eternal from which we spring. So how does Richard give the godless their last rites? And actually, I would love to see what my funeral would be like. Ah. Is that too weird? I've never actually performed a, a, a humanist ceremony on someone who's still alive, so we're, tr we're entering new ground here. Well, no one's ever... It would, it would help me, Tev, if you were actually dead. That's because no one's complained well, before, I so think... now I have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about right over here? People who engage others find meaning and happiness in life. Tevia was such a person. Through evolution, in the course of millions and millions of deaths, humanity has evolved. We carry this inheritance. We look death in the face with honesty, dignity, and calm. Ugh. Getting eaten alive by these bugs. That was. Uh, I have more, but that sort of the, gives you the gist. I guess the lesson I'm supposed to learn is that I need to save her being alive. Focusing on the life we have as we're here with our friends on our earth with our and other people, we are grateful every day for all the joys and the brief moments of happiness and the magnificent opportunities that we have when we're alive. 
I was lying there on the ground with the bugs and the crickets and the red ants crawling all over me and I'm thinking, I'm alive! And then I look around and I see all these dead people and they're gonna be dead for a really, really, really long time and that really freaks me out. If you think attending your own atheist funeral can freak you out, you ain't seen nothing yet. I was about to take a frigid northern trip with a devout atheist teenager to a place you would never guess. A search for God in my own head. But before I could search for God up north and in my head, I would first have to get there. But my extreme fear of prop planes and high altitude turbulence had me wondering if I'd be meeting with Richard, the atheist funeral director, sooner rather than later. <sighs> breathe, Tavia, breathe. Anyone got an antacid? Alas, a safe arrival in Sudbury, Ontario. Oh, God. I was here with high school atheist and science buff Alex. Our goal was to meet an esteemed professor who was doing one of the most mind-blowing religious experiments on Earth. Okay, thanks. When I got there, I could only hope the inside of my brain wouldn't be as messy as the professor's office. It's not there. Are you sure we came to the right place? You are? Yep. It looked like either we were really early or the professor was late. Instead of waiting and waiting in this dingy hallway, Alex and I decided to walk amongst some of the oldest cliffs on Earth. What do your friends at school think about you being an atheist? Most of my friends are atheists. Really? Have you always been an atheist? No. So did you grow up a Christian? Yeah, I would say. I grew up with a belief in God, but I wouldn't say that my family was Christian. What do you do on Christmas? I celebrate Christmas as a family thing, as a chance for everybody to get together and enjoy, and it's almost more of a commercial event for me than it is anything else. A lot of people believe in heaven and hell and God, and if you're a, a good person in this life, you'll go to heaven. What are your thoughts on all of that? Heaven's sort of a good thought to have if you can't deal with the idea of leaving. Leaving as in dying. Ugh, it sucks being dead. So as an atheist, what, what happens to you when you die? I would almost say that I believe more in energy. I don't know what happens to you when you die. I, like all the energy that you are as a person, I don't know what happens to it. I don't know if there's nothing after, but I certainly don't think there's a heaven. This rock is two billion years old. If God didn't create all of this, who did? A random series of events. Why can't we just appreciate that it's here? Because I think everyone is looking for proof. Proof of something. Proof of God. Proof of no God. Proof of evolution. I think everybody's looking for the same answer, but just in different ways. Well, what would you say as an atheist is your biggest question? Why? I'm always looking for something to enlighten me or change my mind, you know? Yeah. Or even just give you more evidence for your yeah. fact. Yeah. <clears throat> and with that misstep, Alex was once again going to take me to find Dr. Persinger, the professor that was perhaps conducting the most intriguing experiments on Earth about how humans think about God and religion search for God in my own head. My atheist journey had taken me through thunderstorms and a near-death experience. Now I was up north in Sudbury to become a guinea pig in a unique God experiment with this neuroscientist. I'm Tevya. Tevya. It's very nice to meet you. This is Alex. Hi, Alex. You're going to be the subject. Okay. You're in the dark, you're going to be blindfolded. Oh, okay. Okay. But this is going to take an hour. Okay. 
<laughs> now, what is this? Is this actually say something? Yeah, it does. It certainly does. Okay, now. After 2,000 experiments, what all these electrodes, contraptions, and brain monitoring devices have been proving for decades is that it is altogether possible for the human brain to perceive a spirit or a sense of something around us. Dr. Persinger believes that this could be the sense of God that many of us have. So we can basically bathe the brain in the patterns that are similar to those that are associated with specific kinds of experiences. Okay. Such as pleasantness, God experiences, sense presences, and so forth. If you stimulate the right hemisphere, yeah. what you get is the sudden sense of a presence. Okay. And when that enters into awareness, you feel as if there is another self, an, uh, another entity, a sentient being okay. beside you. I hear voices in my head sometimes telling me to do things. Is that, God, is that, who's, who is that? What is that? Most people, before they fall asleep at night, hear their name called. Tavia, Billy, Jim, Alice. I don't hear that before I go to bed. I hear, yo, sexy. Maybe you hear, yo, sexy, most of the time, and that's what's gonna enter into your awareness. So basically, your name is not Tavia, it's yo, sexy. All right, all, all right. right, so now what's next? All right, so we're gonna put you into the evil hands okay. of Professor Soroka. <laughs> this little room holds the key. It is here the doctor first straps on this swim cap electrode thingy. Then he blindfolds you. Total quiet for a whole hour. The idea is then to zap a small part of the brain with electromagnetic impulses to induce a God feeling. So what we're going to do... Do I sit down? Yes, please. Oh! Now, in order to make sure that the uh, electrical potentials that are coming off your scalp... Uh, we have just this gel, and I'll show you what it looks like. Are you going to inject that into me? Not into. So that's not going to go into my brain? No. <laughs> not okay. at all. Okay. Because I'm having enough trouble, you know, thinking without goop injected <laughs> into my brain. It's what's that smell? It's it's a combination of a candy store and fear. <laughs> it's the gel. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is. Oh, now I. Oh. Do you feel that? Yeah, it feels awfully weird. It feels like you're lubing up my head. It pretty much is. How's that? That's okay. I'm trusting you. So this should be over pretty quickly, and then what we can do is we'll, I'll just go and make sure that everything is sure. applied properly. Now I feel smarter. <laughs> All right, then we will uh, do our thing. Okay, so just relax now. All right, so let's put some uh, Kleenex over his eyes. You're not going to tape my mouth shut, are you? No, of course not. Okay. Now look, nothing's going to happen to you that's no. negative. It's only going to be positive. I, and it's I going know. to be very subtle. I know. The goal here is to keep my senses deprived of all outside stimulation. No light, no sound. Now don't force the phenomena. Okay. Just experience the raw phenomenon. Oof. First it will Sounds be... Sounds exciting. So I'm going to just not say that's anything. Right. That's and right. I'll just wait until the end to tell you what okay. I think. And... Showtime. Will I see God? Okay, can you hear me? I can. Okay, just relax. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Basically, this is essence of science. Waiting. But what is this? A problem with my brain? So every time that happens, it's because he's squirming? Yep. Have. Yeah. Well, just relax. I'm coming in. Is my brain malfunctioning? Is God in the room with me? God? Don't move so much. Relax. Pretend you're in slow mo. Pretend you're in suspended animation. All right. It was something more profound. I had to go to the bathroom.
bad. So yeah, there's no chance. I can't take a, a pee break. If I left the stuff on, I just keep the thing on my head and walk to the bathroom. So I'm gonna leave my shoes off and everything off. I'm just gonna run sure. it come back. Okay, he's gonna walk with you. Don't mind. That was a relief. Okay, so you're gonna be okay for about 40 minutes, right there, Ted? Yep. Okay, we'll just hold your horses. Now to relax and sense something other than my full bladder. It wouldn't take long. These brain waves were telling the neuroscientists something was going on. And back in the room, I was definitely feeling something during my 40 minutes of complete darkness. But what was it? Coming in. Okay. Lights are coming on. There we go. There's the pen. We can take off the hat. Oh. For a couple of seconds, like about two minutes into it, I felt like there was someone standing right here. Okay. And I and I felt like terror, but then I I, my, I sort of was like, what? And then it went away. And so I'm sitting here, all of a sudden there was this spirit kind of standing right here, almost like a man. Right. And I wasn't sure if he was gonna reach out and strangle me or not. Okay. Now you said you felt like you were somewhere else. Hell. Okay. This was hellish. Okay. I felt like you're like you were you were torturing me. Okay. Just through all the stimuli that you got, that you took away from me. Yeah. The no sight, the no sound, nothing. I had nothing but my own thoughts. I felt like, I felt like. Okay, okay. All right. Well, you know something very clear now. What? That if we break the protocol. Yeah. It ends up being hellish and not heavenly at all. It was horrifying. Like when I heard your voice saying you were come in, yeah. that's the closest thing to God that I've heard <laughs> since I've gotten here. Glad it's over. <laughs> oh my. Thank you for your time. Quite and uh, I appreciate you uh, letting me experience a little bit of God, a little bit of heaven, and a whole lot of hell. <laughs>